Landon, my man, what is going on, buddy? Uh, not much. What about you, Devin? Uh, you know, trying to survive, trying to survive, getting ready for the 23 outdoor season. You know, I just yeah. seen on your Facebook that you just wrapped up the indoors. Um, how'd you do this year, buddy? Um, I rode 450, 250 in Unlimited C. Um, we ended up winning one uh, 450C race at the beginning of the year. Um, went good. Um, we had about a bad second round. Um, couldn't get my starts down or anything, but overall the season went well. Uh, got two podiums and a fourth at the end of the series, so a lot better than last year, except, uh, especially me being in C-class only two years. So, Yeah. Uh, yeah, it went pretty well. That's awesome, man. And, you know, when I first met you, I believe it was next level. I'm not 100% where I had met you at, but you were just dealing with a leg injury. Mm -hmm. How's that treat? How's that treating you right now, man? I know that was a serious injury that you had. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, uh, back in February, I think it was February 15th or 16th, I believe. Um, I was practicing at 221, and 221 is a local track down in Union Mills, and practicing there, and went into a turn and ended up sliding out. And my leg got caught up on the radiator shroud and ended up going over the bars. And my leg got caught and ended up snapping it. Um, ended up having surgery. Kept me out about three and a half, four months. Um, got a rod, four screws. But overall, it feels pretty good. Um, way better than it did about coming into indoors. But um, we've definitely progressed with it. That's awesome. You know, when you're young like that, you can heal up pretty fast. So take advantage of it, but don't get hurt too often, you know. Especially. But, you know, me getting older, man, the slightest fall just takes a toll on me. But anyways, um, what was the hardest part about recovering from the injury? Was it more the mental or the physical part of it? Definitely mental. Uh, coming into my first race in outdoors, uh, I shot for one of the Carolina Outlaw Series races. And definitely coming in, it was, like, scary. Like, I had one practice day before my next race, and, like, it was just – dude, it was scary. Um, but the first gate drop went well. came out about fourth. But, um, dude, I had so many, like, people around me. Like, my stamina wasn't there. My mental health wasn't there. So I took about two months off and got all that back. And then um, had an incident with my shop. It burnt down. Um, we had to repair all our box. And I ended up riding a 150 two-stroke KTM uh, rode that for a little bit. And then I got my 250 back. And that's really when I started ripping. Yeah. You know, class. a lot of that stuff, you can look at it as obstacles. And in the back of your mind, you may be saying, Oh, is it really worth it? You know, am I, is this really meant to be for me? You know, is it worth keep on, you know, not only spending the money, but taking the risk of racing? You know, I'm, I'm going on 27 years old, March. And, you know, I've had 11 concussions, multiple surgeries. Uh, and I've, I've hung the helmet up multiple times after four wheelers. And, you know, and I keep getting these hints. It's like, you're not done yet. Cause my old race team or the owner of the team who I used to race for outlaws uh, with four wheelers and stuff, Marty Benj. And you'll see him on the YouTube channel. I've done an interview with him, but he's messaged me spontaneous throughout the years. And was like, Hey man, I got a spot that you can fill for an intermission race. You want to come ride? And I do it. You know, the first time I did it was at East Lincoln and felt great in practice. Heat race went, uh, didn't go too too good. Uh, held on to second for about two laps. Uh, and on the third lap, it was me, Marty, and his brother, three wide, going down the back stretch at East Lincoln. And going into turn three and four, they all started going down low, including me. And I seen them hitting tires and nerf bars and stuff. So I wanted to slide up higher, just get away from that mess. And when I did that, I hit a braking bump. 
and it snapped the upper and lower right A arm and slung me 30, 40 feet across the track, you know, slam on, you know, hard pack dirt. Cause you know, dirt, dirt car tracks, man, they roll their tracks. It's not ripped, it's not loose. So, you know, that's like a complete dead stop and completely shattered my left shoulder. And the doctor said, man, you know, we can do the surgery, but it, it's more of going to be like a shoulder replacement because of the amount of damage that's done to your shoulder. And I told him, I said, so what would be the long-term effects? He's like, man, it's going to be hard to tell. I said, well, I'll just wait till I retire. So that's one injury that I've never fully healed from. I'm still dealing with, but I push through it. So, you know, especially with the ACL, anything with a leg injury, it's going to be devastating because those are the most things that you use in motocross is your legs. Yeah, but, it, it is really difficult to uh, recover from a leg injury, especially like ankle. Because, dude, if you don't have like, if you don't have that ankle motion, it really, really bothers you. Yeah. Not only that, but you have injuries and then you got to wear certain braces, you know, stuff like that. And it, it makes you feel uncomfortable, but. <clears throat> Let's, let's let's kind of get away from the injuries. I don't want to jinx injuries upon anybody. Oh uh, yeah, I just know that that's that's something that you don't hear a lot of people talk about is their injuries because it is a touchy subject. But at the same time, you got people out here who's wrecked and injured themselves. You know, for an example, when prayers go out to you know Deegan Montgomery, he had a freak accident this past weekend in Tennessee. You know, I. <laughs> When he first came into the racing scene at the beginning of this year and then to watch him make his improvements all the way through indoors and the first round at Revolution, dude, I was really, really impressed. And I could see that he was taking racing seriously. And then he wins the championships and indoors, but has that freak accident. And I was speaking to his dad. I was like, man, I really hope that this doesn't mess with him mentally. Yeah. Um, Deegan. He he's really he's a really smooth rider, and to see him go down like that is really like it's a freak accident. Yeah. Um, the first time I met him, it was at a private track, a uh, junior. Mm -hmm. um, he has a private track up in uh, Bakersville, I believe. Yeah, and I'm up there one day, and dude, I could just see that he had the technique down immediately. Yeah, he, he was squeezing the box legs he was when he transferred from standing to sitting it was like one motion like it was instant and i worked with him for a minute on his turns and stuff for his ruts and he picked it up really easily yeah you know as a beginner you don't like ruts no all. you rather no. Have it be you know hard packed going into the turns but once you get more advanced and you're able to rail them turns not only is it more fun but it's more efficient speed wise. Yes, it is. And um, another thing that I didn't realize it as a beginner, how like your leg when you stick it up on the radiator shroud, how high it needs to be. I yep. used to just, dab, and once you dab your foot, you want to follow your whole body with that foot. And then it's just going down at that point. That was one of the hardest things for me to learn. Yeah. You know, not many people know this and many people do know this, but the point at the end of that radio trial, that is your balance point of the bike. So you get your legs straight in line with that point. You're, you're good go, going through the turn. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about uh, some local tracks. Uh, I know back when I was racing four wheelers, black ankle was a big track for the TT racing series, not only the series, but the community itself. And then the owner had got sick and they had to shut down. I think they shut down for about four, four to five years. And now for them to open back up as a TT track, like two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. And now they've expanded to motocross because if I'm not mistaken, before it was a strict flat track, it was a motocross. They had motocross races out there. Or have you looked into Black Ankle? Have you given it any thoughts? Have you looked up any videos? I've actually never heard of it. I've never heard of it. So yeah, it's, it's kind of cool to hear that there's some new local tracks coming in. Yep, it's in Star, North Carolina. Uh, 
Jed Dryd built the track in the off season, uh, put in a lot of work. They've got that, tra- they got the facility out there looking really good. They got trails, they got the TT track, they got a P dub track, they got intermediate tracks. So I feel like that's going to be coming, become like a full, full time training facility, if you want to call it that, but more of like an open, open practice facility, mm-hmm. you know, seven days a week as long as the weather allows it. But uh, definitely need to check out some of them videos. Uh, I know a couple of the series will be running at Black Ankle this year. I know me and my guys, we're going to be headed out to Black Ankle. So um, are there any local tracks that you're looking forward to seeing this year? Any new renovations? Any new tracks that you're looking at racing? Uh Definitely, I'm looking forward to 221 and Kathy's Creek. Those are my two favorite tracks as far as outdoors. Um, Muddy Creek is another big one. Uh, I've only raced Muddy Creek one time, but we're looking forward to it. We may even shoot four or at us. Uh, more updates on that soon, uh, maybe. Okay, okay, definitely. We'll have to do a, uh, another podcast with you. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Loretta's is something that was going through my mind, but you know, my bike got stolen from 221 along mm-hmm. with eight others. And it, it really set me back mentally yeah. just thinking about, like, you know, is it worth it? But Muddy Creek was another track that I really enjoyed, just the wide open feeling. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but when you get on that starting gate, you, you start thinking, you're like, man, this is where the pros have raced. You know, I, for whatever reason, they took it off the circuit, but you know, just knowing that the pros have been there and they've raced this track and watching it as a kid, that's that's one of them tracks that's, like, on your bucket list. Like, if you don't go, you don't fulfill your dream. Yeah, definitely. Um, I grew up watching my uncle race there, Shane McElrath. Um, it, was, it was really cool watching him race there. And then definitely going there for my first time and being like, wow, this may be where Eli Tomac lined up for the first time. Like, you never know. Yeah. So uh, it really is crazy to think that, but also you don't need to let that get in your head and get, I mean, in front don't of Don't overwhelm yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Um, let's touch on Kathy's Creek. I don't know if you've heard the rumors. I've talked to TJ. He's done an interview with me. He's kind of hinted at it. And not only TJ, but Tanner Fortune, you know, Chris's son. Hey, mm-hmm. then – the grading, uh, fortunes grading business, you know, they have a lot to deal with in the motocross within yes. the outlaw series. Maybe a few other tracks, Paul and dirt, you know, TJ goes out to the next level and helps them out. But one, one thing that's really shocked me and it, it may just be a rumor or it may be true, but me and Taryn were talking and they're thinking about running the track backwards for the day races this year. And then once night racing starts back, they're going to switch it back to the original format. What, I mean, what, what would be your take on that? Like, is that something that you would give a try? Do you think it would be just all out of whack, it'd have no flow? I mean, it'd be something different, but what, what's your opinion on something like that happening? Um, That is a really cool idea. Um, That track really hasn't been changed much since back in the day, but they have done some stuff that has added to the track. Um, But anyways – it would need some like reformation. Some of the jumps need to uh, need to be replaced, like some of that. But um, I don't know. I just have to ride it, man. It just it's weird. Weird to think that how many times I've raced there to run it backwards. That that's that'd be yeah. weird. And, and if I'm not mistaken, that track's been open since 1979. If I'm not mistaken, looking back at the sign as soon as you come into the track, but. That track has a lot of history behind it. Definitely. You know, and we got to give Chris Fortune a big shout out to not only, you know, upkeeping the track, but giving us local riders tracks to race. Exactly. You know, a lot of people bash on Chris about the whole Iron City ordeal. I don't know if you've ever been, but, I mean, back, back in the day, that was an area qualifying track. If that mm-hmm. tells you anything right there. And, you know, people want to bash because Chris wants to cut it back short. But, you know, just like I told TJ, it's all all because of 
you know, the safety of the riders, you know, having – make sure that if something was to happen on the back side of the track, you know, emergency personnel would be able to get to that person safe and then much less transporting them from that spot to the public road and then to the hospital. But, you know, I – I hate to say it, but I don't see that track being here much longer just because of the fact I don't see how they make money on that track. I mean, they race twice a year. Yeah. Um, I really, um, I really like, like the format of the old track. I've never ridden it, but I really like the format and it really seemed like it would be flowy. Um, but cutting it short, I think they spent more money cutting it short than they did re- uh, redoing the whole track. Like, yeah. um, they could have put that dirt on top of that other soil, and it could have been a perfect track. But, I mean, it's their opinion. Um, it making them a little bit of money. So, yeah. And, you know, that, that's one thing I want to touch on this podcast is I'm not here to crit- criticize anybody. I'm just here to, you know, talk Thank about the local stuff and try to try to figure out, you know, what's people's opinions. Because once I start hearing your opinions and when I upload these on YouTube and post them to Facebook and stuff, eventually Chris is going to hear this. And, you know, he's going to be like, well, you know, maybe we can do this or maybe we can extend it out, but not as big. You know, they got that parking lot beside the billboards where they had the sponsors and stuff. Just add in that part and then add, keep what we got and i think that track will be perfect yeah um before we hit on anything else are there any sponsors any shout outs you'd like to give uh i mean definitely my mom and dad jeremy mcgrath haley they have a big part in my motocross uh my dad jason Inslee, um a Serbies, scott Liet, um, KTM, and that's about it. I really don't have any sponsors. I haven't been looking for any, but if and there's any. You know, there's definitely a starting point. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's another subject I like to, taste, to touch base on with a couple of the other riders is sponsorships. They get. I feel like people have their own opinion on sponsors. You know, you got those that – Sponsors will just give you gear or give you parts, whatever the case may be. But then you got those lower class riders who's, you know, getting the discounts and stuff. But yeah. um, sponsorships are a big deal. And if you look back at the pros, man, if the pros didn't have sponsors or have help, they wouldn't be where they're at today. So, you know, definitely don't look down on yourself because you don't have a bunch of sponsors. Because with your progress will come sponsors. And I, I can guarantee you that for sure. Yeah. Sorry. Um, you're good. <laughs> you're uh, good. But um, yeah. Um definitely, I mean, right now, um, I'm sitting in a sorry. I'm sitting in a position I don't need sponsors. Um, but once I go to the road to Loretta's, um, I may need those. Um, but as of right now, I'm sitting pretty good. That's great. And, you know, I've got a few sponsors myself. And without them last year, I wouldn't have been able to do half the stuff. I started out driving an old 99 F250. Motor was about giving out. Me and Ricky – tote up mountain hills and truck sputtering and stuff and making it to these races and had the opportunity got a stable job was able to get me in their truck new bike so stuff's definitely looking up not only for me but i can tell it's looking up for you it's looking up for deacon it's looking up for a lot of these local riders um speaking of local riders are there any particular riders you want to give a shout out to it could be with the progress or you know if they're going to make it to Loretta's, if they're going to try to, you know, would you like to touch bases with anybody out there? Um, there's a couple of riders that I know that can make it to Loretta's. Um, I know you may know him, David Kubik. Mm-hmm. Definitely a big hit. Um, 
he's dude he's he's quick he's he's in c class but he can he can be in that b class for sure uh i would probably say another one would be uh tower mixed twain he's oh, really absolutely definitely. um he came out at ag center firing um Kale carter definitely uh this past weekend at morristown took all four wins yeah um and uh one more is uh matt burkeen i know he's a pro but he's a local ash filler um mm -hmm. he has a youtube channel matt burkeen he uh takes uh videos at Asheville, a1 known as uh crashville yeah uh, videos there and dude it is it is something else um definitely definitely lives up to the name crashville Oh, yeah. You know, it don't matter if you're in D class or pro class. I mean, you're there's always that slight chance that you're just going to have a complete crap race. And it yes. may not. I mean, it, it could happen to anybody. Anything could happen to anybody at any time. Oh, but, dude, um, it's crazy. I do want to touch on one uh, or I'm going to touch on three pro supercross racers. And first one, I, I mean, obviously going to be Hayden Deegan. You know, he came out and, you know, honestly had zero craps to give, man. I mean, he just let it hang out. He did his thing and he won. And then he played it smart in the main and stayed where he felt comfortable. What is, what's the future for Hayden Deegan? Where is he going to go in his profession of a motocross racer? I mean, I think everybody knows that. He's, he's going, to, going to be another champion. He's basically another Jet Lawrence, but a younger version. Um, he does he does need a little more on the bike in Supercross, definitely. Uh, his nerves are still there, but once he gets on that bike, they're gone. That adrenaline is just pumping, dude. Um, but Hayden flying. Um, I didn't think because of the Futures race, Daxton Bennett, he won. That was a real underdog. Um, yeah. But I didn't think he was going to do well, but he he proved everybody wrong. And, I mean, dude, watching him race, I guarantee you it gives hope in other of these or these other riders out here wanting to go pro. Uh, but definitely, definitely a big step. Yeah. And, you know, not only that, but the age factor, 17 years old. He's my age. <laughs> well, no, that's, that's ridiculous to think. You know, most of these 17-year-old kids are out here doing their own thing, but then you also have that handful that's, you know, really committed to the motocross and are striving to reach their goals. I mean, and you see these dads out here with kids on the P-dubs out there yelling. You know, those are the ones that's going to be pushed, and those are the ones that's going to succeed, honestly. If you don't have any kind of motivation or consequence for what you do wrong, you know, you're never going to learn. And that's, I give props to not only the kids to have to listen to the parents yell, but the parents do it because they want what's best for their kids. Yep. Um, two more guys I want to talk, uh, talk about Ken rocks. And what is your thoughts on him going with the kickstart bike? I mean, um, definitely a switch up. Um, my uncle went to Suzuki, um, Shane, um, but definitely a switch up from the East start. Um, you can see videos on TikTok or Instagram, or Facebook of him trying to kick it in gear. But, um, yeah. dude, those bikes are something else. I can, I mean, it's, as you've seen it, I think it was A2. It was either A1 or A2, or it may have been San Diego. He did a triple on triple off or triple on triple on off i think that's what it was yeah tomac tried to do it on the star bike didn't and he hit couldn't it. do it he couldn't do it they no. have and people don't realize it and people are trying to hate on him because he just has a kickstart but if he doesn't stall it it doesn't matter that's yeah. my thing he doesn't stall it it doesn't matter yeah, and he, he's got he's got enough experience under him 
to where he's been through that situation before. He knows what to do, but he just got used to the East start. And then it just slowly had to come back to him. Hey, I can't run the bike the certain way. I can't do this and I can't do that because of the possibilities of what if I do stall out. Yep. You know, it's not as easy as to touch of a button. But the last guy I do want to talk about is Tomac. Um, how much longer does he have? Dude, I he just keeps surprising me, like, year after year. Um, he's had a rough start. Well, not a rough start, but these past two rounds have been really rough for him. Um, he had a bad crash. Um, I think he was A2. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a bad crash, um, battling Webb, and then I expected him to be up front. Um, winning Houston, he usually goes back to back, and yeah. um, dude, Webb pulled it off. I knew, I knew this was going to be a Webb year because he was. If you see him and his results at the beginning of the year, he starts off getting top seven, top five, top three, and he works his way up. And once he gets that first win, it's like he wants to get it even more. It, it clicks, that light switch clicks. You know, Tomac's been on Honda. He's been with Kawasaki. And he's been with Yamaha. Do you think later on down the road, you know, with all these young talented kids coming in with star and stuff eventually the star is going to realize okay tomac's gaining some age we're gonna to have to kind of you know let him go and bring in these new kids which is all understandable from a business standpoint if that was to happen where do you think he would go if he was to leave star i think he'd retire i think I mean, he has a kid. He has a wife. He's been doing it for so long. He's won multiple, multiple championships. Um, I think he just passed. I think it was James Stewart or it was somebody. Um, One of the goats. <laughs> but James Stewart, I think James Stewart came to that last race because if he won that, he would have passed him. Yeah. Um, he's right there with all the top guys in motocross and supercross. And, I think he succeeded his goals, and if this will, if this year doesn't go well, then I think he may retire. Yeah, and I can't, I can't dis disagree with you. I feel like it's gotten to the point where once he reaches all these goals and records that he's broken, it just comes to a point in time. It's kind of like Tom Brady, man. Just give it up, like you, like you, you done made a name for yourself. You are one badass rider. Yeah, know? definitely. But anyways, Landon, I appreciate you joining this podcast and hopefully, you know, well, not hopefully, we will be seeing each other here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, definitely. I may be up on the Seagate. Uh, I've given it some thoughts. So we'll, we'll see where that's going to go. Dude, but, it's going to be early. Oh, yeah, man. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time. But with the progress that I've made and with me being off a bike for four months, dude, I thought I was going to come back in and be like a total noob and just suck and i ran it out top gun a few weeks ago and dude i it's not like i didn't lose anything also i probably gained some knowledge and stuff like that you know and then <clears throat> where else do i ride i've been riding shelby mx here lately and uh it's not a full prep track but one thing i struggled with last year was clearing jumps you know committing to them and mm -hmm. i've gotten to the point where you know if you if you don't if you if you're gonna chase something, you can't hold yourself back. You can't be like, okay, well, if I crash, what am I gonna break? What's gonna hurt? You know, you, if you want to do something, just do it. Yep, you but, got some of those tracks. Um, they're really good, no prep. Like it really helps you with corners, like being in slit dry corners. I mean, that really helps. Control. But um, sometimes, honestly, you got to take a step back from racing and really look at it from one side or both sides rather than one side. And it really does help. Um, like my injury, I came back and I thought I was going to be gassed. I was going to get dead last, but came out the gate third, ended up fifth. Um, 
next moto wasn't that good. I got taken out, but <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Landon, I, I really do look forward to watching you. Uh, not only am I going to be doing these podcasts, but when I'm not on the track racing or at a track racing, I'm going to be at the track getting videos, pictures, stuff like that, because I want, I want to get more recognition for the local tracks and the local riders. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you see all these pro people on YouTube, you know, making a name for themselves. Well, I, I kind of want to give back to the local guys and get them out there too. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to see how you do this year. And we'll definitely be doing some future uh, podcasts with you, you know, giving updates. You know, you said something about Loretta, so we'll keep that kind of on the down low. Yep. But, uh, you know, I wish you the best of luck this year, you know, healthy season. You know, I'm ready to see them smiles and, you know, all them good friends of ours. So, Landon, Landon I do appreciate it. Uh, and hopefully here in the next few weeks, we'll get another uh, day schedule for another interview. Sounds good, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Landon. All right. See you, man.